Let me also try to be as patriotic as Joe, maybe for a different reason. Well, this week, two very important things happened insofar as the country's COVID-19 situation is concerned. President Uhuru Kenyatta, during the COVID-19 National Conference, and on his 12th address to the nation announced easing of restrictions to prepare the country for what is now widely being called the new normal. Lovers of the bottle celebrated with a return to bars and entertainment spots. Some called it Uhuru wa Pombe. Others called it Uhuru wa Kunyo Pombe. To some, it was a new year of sorts. Truly, 2020 has been a difficult year. Hopefully, that decision to reopen bars with no result in a surge on coronavirus infections. But amid the cheers from bars and other joints, a more sobering report was making its way to Parliament, the Auditor General's report on how COVID-19 billions were used, or in this case, misused. You remember my early warning system of a corona gate in April this year? Just a few days after the first COVID-19 case was confirmed in the country, well, the new Auditor General, Nancy Gadongo, in her first major assignment, has vindicated that early warning and confirmed that money meant for building a war chest to combat the pandemic had ended up lining the pockets of a few well-connected and crafty business persons. Of course, there's no surprise whatsoever. Hasn't past calamities produced millionaires, if not billionaires, and very little or nothing happened? The utadu attitude and the impunity with which public resources are mismanaged in this country is as daring as it is disheartening. And make no mistake, if another disaster strikes, be it floods, a drought, or some other pandemic of equal or greater magnitude than COVID-19, the same cabal of schemers will be waiting for it. The Auditor General had the un unenviable task of getting to the bottom of the Corona Gates come that has diluted the war against COVID-19 and raised suspicion. In the report presented to the Senate, Ms. Gavungo and her team established that KEMSA not only over-procured with no budget, but also illegally diverted funds meant for universal health care to purchase COVID-19 supplies at inflated prices. The report indicating that KEMSA is sitting on at least 97% of the procured stock is at a cost of 7.6 billion shillings. That means supplies worth 6.2 billion shillings are lying at Kemsa Godowns in Embakasi. And with their value depreciating daily, the Auditor General projects that the taxpayer will lose not less than 2 billion shillings if the masks and the PPEs at Kemsa warehouses were sold today at market price. The Auditor General in the report outlines how Kemsa went on a buying spree overshot its budget, and in some instances, awarded lucrative tenders to companies that were barely at their infancy stage since they were established. That companies with no evidence of specialization in supply of medical equipment points to obvious collusion between crafty business people, Kemsa directors, and their bosses at Afi House. And all this was done with utmost secrecy, with the emergency of COVID-19 used as an excuse. That time, when we said wakiesabu tunayesabu, getting details of what was procured and at what price and from whom was as difficult as finding a needle in the darkness. President Huru Kenyatta ordered a thorough probe on the COVID-19 billions within 21 days and publication of all tender details in government websites that is yet to happen. When he returns from France, the period he gave for investigations will have long lapsed. I would advise him to look at this quote by Abraham Maslow, the American psychologist best known for creating the Maslow's hierarchy of needs. And the quote is, in any given moment, we have two options, to step forward into growth or to step back into safety, end of quote. At the very minimum, let those who, are, let those who misused, mismanaged or misapplied the COVID-19 billions be punished and surcharged for the loss of public funds. If the small fish end up being netted, while the big boys and girls of graft are adorned in PPEs of state, political and family ties for protection from prosecution, then it will be a double loss in the fight against COVID-19 and the graft war. That's my punchline.